my name is Rachel and I love crafting. And today is kind of a resin video, <laughs> but kind of not. Uh, today we're going to learn or attempt to make molds, resin molds molds to use with the resin <laughs> and I did get a couple of products off of Amazon for that. I got this two-part silicone rubber and, and it's it's very similar to the actual resin where you mix equal parts of A and B and and use that to pour over your object that you're trying to make a mold of and I actually purchased this one because it has a 40 minute work time and I wanted room for error. <laughs> Because a lot of them only have like a three or five minute work time. So that's why I did go with this particular set. And I'd already removed it from the box because I wanted to get them standing upright because with all these types of products, one of the biggest complaints is they show up leaking. So as soon as I get them, I want to make sure I get them out of the box and stood upright so that, you know, they won't. <laughs> and then the second product that we are going to try is this easy mold silicone putty. Similar concept where you take an equal amount of A and B the containers and you mix them together and then you press in your object to you know create your mold. You can see some examples there on the front and this one is one of the ones that you have a really quick work time you've got to be quick once once you get it mixed you only have three minutes this is a three minute working time but it's cured in 25 minutes so in theory you can use your mold in 25 minutes but you only have three minutes to get it you know once it's mixed to get your impression in there so that's gonna have to work quick with that one so those are the objects we're going to use and I'm just going to be making molds of charms I'm not sure what else to make molds of, but <laughs> funny enough, these exact two charms right here, you can see them, it's a little spider with a skull and a huge spider. I saw a mold on Amazon that has these exact same two molds in it. I don't know if they're the same size or bigger or what, but they're exactly these charms, but in mold form. <laughs> so I was like, well, they've already made a mold out of it. Let's see if I can actually make a mold with the charms I have. <laughs> So we'll see. I have a few other charms we're going to try to. I'm not exactly 100% sure when I'm going to get around to filming the second part of this video. <laughs> I just had time to do the intro real quick here and that part of the video since we get turned around to craft vision I you know can film it any time. It doesn't matter if I'm looking presentable or not. <laughs> I really like how my makeup came out today. Uh, I feel like it's one of those things where my makeup came out great but I'm really not going to be doing anything with it. <laughs> Let's get ourselves turned around to craft vision and let's see if we can figure out how to make some molds. And if you actually do see me on camera again, it's going to be a completely different look. Because like I said, that's going to be another day. <laughs> so I'm finally getting around to filming my making a silicone molds for resin video. I filmed my introduction to this video probably two weeks ago and just haven't had time to <laughs> get around to this part of it. But I'm excited to try and make some molds. And first we're going to start with the putty, which I think is like the possibly easier solution for this. So for this all we're going to have to do is take equal amounts of each putty, mo uh, mix them together by hand, you, and until they become a solid color, no streaks in it, and then you use a charm to impress into it. Or, I mean, you could use anything. I'm using charms. I'm trying charms. So we'll see how that goes. Charms are super thin, so I'm unsure if that'll make a good mold or not, but I want to give it a try anyway. And from what I've read, you have, you're supposed to mix it for like maybe a minute, but you only have about three minutes of working time with it. So it does set up pretty quickly. And then within 20 minutes, you can remove your object. But if you're going to use resin in the mold, you do have to wait 24 hours for it to finish curing. So you can also put it in the oven to speed up that curing, but I'm just going to let them sit for 24 hours. So I guess we're just going to start. Let's see here. This is like a very thick putty consistency. Also a little slimy. <laughs> Let me just roll this into a ball so we can look at the 
two balls next to each other and see if they match. They look about equal. I'm going to take these two balls and just mix them. Okay, it seems pretty well mixed. And I just realized this is a silicone mat, and I don't think you're supposed to put silicone on silicone. So I'm going to pull up this mat to put it on. So hopefully it won't stick. Okay, let's just smooth it out. I need it big enough for my charm. And if your charm's thicker, you're definitely going to want a thicker piece because you don't want to press it all the way down to the bottom. So let's see. I think it needs just a little bit more pressing out. Okay, there's one. I made this one thicker because this one's a little bit deeper. Okay, and like I said, we'll have to wait 20 minutes before we can remove the charms and see how the impressions took, and then have to wait 24 hours before we can use resin in them. But uh, you'll know that it's ready to remove the charm when you go to put your fingernail in it, and it no longer leaves a little fingernail mark. Okay, so those are the only two I'm going to do on camera, and I'll come back in 20 minutes so we can remove the charms. Just wanted to hop back on here real quick and show you, you if you mix it for too long, it sets up so you can't use it. So I totally messed up because I just mixed that for too long and it's already rubbery. See, it won't even take my nail indent. So that's what happens if you mix it for too long. So you really do have a pretty short window working with this stuff. So next we're gonna be using this liquid silicone. And to do that, we have to make a little mold box. So I have this coffin cookie cutter and you do is you put tape and mark it. You want your sticky side to be up and then mark it like that so you can see your outline. And then we're going to add charms, making sure that there's a little bit of wall or space between the charm and the wall and press them down into that tape. And then we put our coffin back on. And then we're gonna have to hot glue around the outer edge to form a seal. So I'm just waiting for my hot glue gun to warm up. And now I did buy this particular one because it does have a 40 minute work time. Some of these only have like a three minute work time. And also I'm gonna need a plastic spoon to stir these. You can't stir the silicones with a wooden spoon. So I'm gonna go grab a plastic spoon real quick. Okay, I think my heat gun or my glue gun is warm. So I'm going to try and create that seal around the edge. Okay, so I <laughs> think that's that's fine. I might have made a little bit of a mess, but it doesn't matter. So it'll just all get peeled off later. So next we're going to mix equal parts of these two, and I'm going to mix them in this pre-measured out cup. Two, I'm going to do four tablespoons total. I think that should be enough to cover these. And I'm going to go stir this for three minutes. I'll be right back. So I've stirred this for three minutes. There are some bubbles in here. And I'm not sure how you pop bubbles with this. So I'm gonna start pouring it in the mold and you should pour it in just like one location and let it spread out through the mold. Okay, that I think that's more than enough. I think it's deep enough. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure about those bubbles, how to get those out. I don't know if you can use a heat gun 
with the silicone. Okay, the heat gun actually um, did work for popping a lot of those bubbles, but I don't know if my adding heat will mess up the curing process any. <laughs> But this, I, I believe, does take several hours to cure, and again, 24 hours for a full cure if you want to use resin in it. Sorry about the volume in that last clip. I forgot to put my microphone on. <laughs> but I did have a little more of this. I'm really glad I got the one that gives you a 40-minute work time because I went and grabbed another cookie cutter, and I'm going to try a couple more charms. I might need to make some more, though, for this. And actually, I am going to need to make just a little bit more because I'm not quite covering this crow skull, but I'll do all that off camera. So it's been about, I'd say 20 minutes and I, can, I can't make a nail imprint in these anymore. So I think we can remove the charms. Of course, like I said, we'll still have to wait 24 hours before they're fully cured and we can try them with resin but we can remove the charms and see what that what they look like at least. I feel like I made these really thin. Hopefully I don't rip them. Uh-oh. He might have a tiny little hole there in his head. His head might have gone all the way through. So I may not be able to use him, but we'll see. Okay, that one looks pretty decent. Now this, this charm itself is super thin, so I don't think I had to worry about this one going all the way through. And that's a really good imprint. It's gonna be a really thin resin piece, but we'll, fi we'll figure out how that works. And there she is. And these two I'm also doing in the other type of silicone, so we'll be able to compare the two types of molds as well. But I'm going to let all this sit for 24 hours, and we'll come back tomorrow. Uh, we'll be able to unmold these, see how these set. Hopefully they set. Hopefully I mix them well enough, and we'll have a nice silicone mold with these. And um, we'll try pouring resin in them, and then 24 hours after that, we'll have an idea of how these all worked out. So I have actually let these cure for about 20 hours and they definitely feel nice and hard. This particular liquid silicone actually takes um, six hours to set. I think I mentioned in a previous clip that you can buy ones that set up a lot faster. I just chose this one because I wanted that 40 minute work time in case I messed up. <laughs> like, because you saw me like, need this one too long and <laughs> mess with at least one huge chunk of that up. But hopefully letting it sit for longer than the six hours won't affect the unmolding of it. And we are going to do that right now. Let's see how these molds came out. That glue comes off really nicely, so that's good. Let's see if we can get this out of these cookie cutters. Okay, that came out nicely. Let's remove. I just need to trim up a little bit of this excess here. I'd have to clean that up just a little bit more, but so far that looks pretty good. And this one's going to be hard to get out. Oh, it looks like a lot of it went under. Okay, that one might have just been a bad one to make a mold from because of the way it's shaped, but I'll have to clean that up a little bit more, I think. I'll work on that off camera. Let's take a look at this one. The glue on this one's being a little more stubborn. 
Well, that one came out nice. That'll be a nice mold. Ooh, that one came out really nice. I think I'm going to have a similar problem with this spider as I did with the crow skull because of the way that the silicone gets under it there. Actually, that might have worked. I'm just going to have to clean that up a little bit more too, but... Okay, and then after you demold them, you're supposed to let them sit for another four hours just to make sure that these undersides are fully dry before you pour resin in them. So I'll be back in four hours and we're going to try these out with resin. I decided to skip showing you the mixing resin, pouring the resin part, because I have other resin videos that you can always go watch that in. But I definitely want to show you the unmolding of these pieces. Now, you know, every time I do something for the first time, it's definitely a learning curve to it. And several of these with the putty, I really did not make thick enough. So when I pressed the charm in, pressed um, in one case, there was a small hole. And in the other cases, it pressed too thin, where if you held it up to the light, you could see the light right through it. So these are, some of these are molds I may not be able to use again. But we'll see. Um, I, like I said, learning experience. I'll know next time to make them thicker when I'm using those charms because the charms do have a little bit of thickness to them. And then with these, these are, because again, I'm using charms, so they're pretty thin. So they were pretty shallow, and I did end up overfilling a few of these. And that might also, you know, mess up my results a little bit, especially this one, because I, I totally neglected the part where the real one is hollow in the center and I filled it in at the center so that's way overfilled <laughs> but we'll see we'll see how these turn out so let's just get to the unmolding and you can see I definitely overfilled it I definitely would have to trim some of these edges off here to you know make that usable but not terrible not terrible and I actually had found these if you can see it, the color shift here, but they're holographic powders, they're nail powders. Uh, but I, I used those uh, for the inside of my molds and also I put some of the silver in the resin itself. So there's a little bit of a hollow shift to them as well, which I think is really pretty. Oh, that one actually came out much better than I thought I would. Again, you know, there's some parts that I would need to trim off but that actually came out really well. And the octopus isn't too terrible. And that holographic blue powder is really pretty. But again, there's a lot of trimming I'm going to have to do on that. And I'm not 100% sure that these molds will be, because this is the one that actually had a hole all the way through it, but it didn't seem to stop it from working. Like none of the resin leaked out of that tiny little hole. So that's good, but I'll have to, I don't, not 100% sure I'll be able to use these molds again. They look like they're intact, so I might be able to use these molds again even. And this one you can see is really thin, but it's still, I think it came out pretty good. Um, again, I'll have to do some trimming up on it. And I definitely will have to practice pouring for these much thinner molds because I just have so much overflow on those. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Ooh, actually. So this one actually, I think yeah, I still overflowed it, overfilled it just a little bit. And there's a little bit of trimming I would have to do. But I think this one, the mold, um, the liquid silicone mold definitely did give us a better representation of that charm, I think. So pretty good. Ooh, she came out really pretty. And I, I feel like the, the powders that I put in the mold worked a lot better with the, the liquid silicone mold than it did with the putty silicone molds. I mean, just, these two are just so much more vibrant than their putty counterparts. And that one actually didn't come out bad at all. I'm actually impressed. 
and this mold I'll definitely be able to use again. Now this is the one that I way overfilled. <laughs> I don't have a lot of hope for this one. I might be able to trim it up and still use it, but you can see where you know it has the solid back now when it should be should be hollow. <laughs> But this is supposed to be the exact right size for these. Yep. So I just need to practice pouring that much thinner mold and I will be able to make perfect little cameos. That is awesome. And there's my crew skull. He's not too bad. Again, needs a little bit of trimming up, a little overfilled. But yeah. That's pretty good. So I definitely prefer these molds, the, the ones I made with the two-part liquid. I definitely feel that those pieces did come out a little bit nicer, but I still had some good results with the putty. So that was definitely a fun experiment. Like I said, there was some trial and error and I, I made a few mistakes and I'll be able to definitely do better next time. But let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of all this and what you think of the two different types of molds here. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, of course you can give it a thumbs down, but please leave me some constructive criticism in the comments below so I can improve. And please subscribe to the channel. And I hope everyone is just staying happy, healthy, and safe in this incredibly crazy world we are living in. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye!